Hello, my name is Debbie Sharma and I'm a consultant podiatrist and I have with me here the lovely Daphne. Um, she attends the Diabetes Foot Clinic in Poole and she lives in Dorset and we're just going to have a little chat this morning, uh, Daphne, about your journey and, and what living with a, a diabetes foot ulcer has meant to you and, and the effect that it's had on your life. So welcome and and thank you for for joining us and Daphne perhaps we could start with you just telling us a little bit about when you first started having problems with your feet. It started 22 years ago um, I was walking along Stodland Beach and I trod on a, um, a razor shell and I just did not feel it um, it wasn't until a couple of weeks later that I noticed that there was gunge coming from between my toes and I went to my doctor and he said that I needed to go into hospital ASAP. I was diagnosed the same year as having diabetes, which I did not know in the first place. So, yes, my blood sugars were up in the high 20s. And that was the start of it all. Gosh, Daphne, that must have been quite a shock um, those 26 years ago from having just, um, I'm assuming, fairly recently been told that, that you had diabetes. Um, had you been given any information about how that might affect your feet or looking after your feet before you have this problem? I didn't have any, any inclination. I wasn't told that it could affect my feet or anything. But um, it, they said that it could be ongoing and I may have ulcers. But this has been ongoing ever since, well, 22 years ago. The ulcers have healed at some stage, um, but then they erupt again. Um, it's just ongoing. Uh, yes, it's, it's hard. It's hard. It has inhibited my lifestyle. I used to be, a, well, a walker, having had dogs. Um, yeah, I, I can't do the walking that I used to. So from that first injury all, all those years ago and, and that sort of infection that you, you had that caused you to, to end up in, in hospital, you say that that did heal up. But since then, you've, you've had sort of lots of other problems with, with your feet and that's prevented you being as active and getting out, out and about. So quite a number of challenges there that, uh, that you've faced. And I know you've, you've had some surgery as well, haven't you? I have indeed, yes. Um, they, it started off by me having pins inserted in my toes because my toes were beginning to curl. And they tried the pins in to keep them straight, but that didn't work. Um, then I had screws in my big toes to try and keep them straight but it turned out that I was allergic to the surgical steel which caused ulcers on, on both feet and then I had um, amputation on my left foot um, it was supposed to be just one toe and while I was uh, having this operation done under local anaesthetic the registrar asked me if he if I minded him taking two toes off, but it ended up me having three toes removed and part of my foot, which has inhibited me a lot. Um, it's still ongoing. I still have ulcers. Various antibiotics, IV antibiotics times in the hospital for weeks, maybe just a few days. But basically, I just sit on my bottom all day long. Oh, so the real challenges there, Daphne. And, and as you sort of said at the beginning, it's it's really sort of affected what, what you've been, uh, been able to do. 
how how have you managed to overcome some of these challenges and, and remain as cheerful as you are? Well, fortunately, I do have hobbies. Um, I knit, I crochet, I read, I play patience with cards. Um, I just try to keep my sanity. And that's all you can do, really, is try to keep cheerful. And that's me. At nearly 80 years of age, I don't think I've done so bad. I think everybody's going to be looking at you and, with, and gasping that that can't possibly be true, Daphne, uh, because I think, you you know, knowing you, obviously, for a few years, I think you, you have coped, you know, mag magnificently. And I think you've, you've knitted quite a, uh, quite a few things for the hospital, haven't you? I have. I have indeed, yes. I've knitted for the staff when they've had babies. I've knitted complete outfits. And my daughter used to work at the maternity hospital and I was forever making baby clothes, which I loved doing. They were so quick to knit. Um, and it was just one thing after another. People kept asking me, can you make me this? Can you make me that? And I've been happy to do it. You've just got to have a different outlook on life. Try and keep cheerful. That's all I can offer. And I, I know you. It, it has, it has been hard, but uh, you've, uh, you've always been a ray of sunshine uh, when, whenever we've uh, seen you coming into our clinic. So, is there anything else that that sort of kept you going through the, you know, when, when things have felt quite difficult? It's been hard. Um, I do have visitors, um, neighbours are very good. Uh, I've only got to pick up the phone and there'll be somebody there to help me um, 24 hours a day. And it's nice to have good neighbours that you can rely on. I have to do online shopping now. I don't know what the inside of a shop looks like anymore. <laughs> I think probably a few people could say that, couldn't they, over the, the, last, uh, the last couple of years? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, yes, the lockdown has been harder because I haven't seen so many people. But thanks to the district nurses as well, they, they, they've kept me sane. And we have a laugh. And the, you've just got to look past the, the problems with the feet, you've got to adjust your life. It is hard, as I've said before, but you will get there eventually. You will get there. And I'm positive I'm not going to have any more surgery, thanks to the wonderful team at Pool Hospital. I can't fault them anywhere. Oh, well, that's 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 certainly been an aim for all of us, hasn't it, Daphne? Can I just ask you, because you mentioned right at the beginning about when when you first damaged your feet, you were walking along the beach and and your foot was cut by a by a shell. But, but you, couldn't, you couldn't feel it. You, you had no feeling in your feet. And and we know that can be a, a side effect or a complication of, of the diabetes. Were you aware at the time that, that you didn't have any feeling in your feet? It, it was well, at the time I didn't really realize, you know, but um, we were visiting my daughter and it was the May bank holiday and we were walking the dogs along the beach. And of course, they went in the water. I followed them. And my daughter said to me, Mum, how can you walk in that water? It's so cold. And I couldn't feel it. And I, I didn't think anything more of it. But having, well, looking back on it, I should have realised at the time. So never, ever neglect your feet. Never, ever. It is so hard and you don't realise. And I suppose you, you hadn't really been given, you know, much information when you were first diagnosed with diabetes about how it might affect your feet. I was so shocked. I didn't know um, the side effects at the time. Yes, I used to walk my dog 
um, and come back and drink glass upon glass of water and it wasn't quenching my thirst. And apparently that was a classic side effect of diabetes. I must admit, I was really, really shocked. It, it's one of those things that you never think will happen to you. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really understand the ins and outs of it, but I do now. Yeah. So what, thank, thank you for that. So if, what advice would you give um, somebody that, that was worried about their, their foot, whether they've got sort of diabetes or, or not? Don't let it go on. Seek medical advice. Please look after your feet. They are precious. Without them, where would life be? I've seen people worse off than myself in the clinic and in the hospital as well. Not just elderly people, young people as well. I was very sudden one year when I was in hospital. There was this young girl. She came in with an ulcer on her foot. They told her that they were going to remove her foot and it ended up having amputation just be, oh dear, just above her knee. And that hurt me. It really hurt me to think somebody as young as that was suffering like, like that. And please never, ever neglect your feet. They are really, really precious. I, th I think that you've given us a really, really good message there, Daphne, and, and also in, in about looking after your diabetes as well, which, which you have done. Your diabetes is, is well controlled, isn't it? And you've, you've taken it, it very seriously. It is, yes. Um, I never have had a sweet tooth. So giving up sugary things has never, ever bothered me. But you don't realise how much food stuff has got sugar in it. Even soup, tins of meat. You read the labels and there's sugar in nearly every item and you can't cut it all out completely. Mm -hmm. um, another thing, why do they have to add sugar to cereals? We could add our own sugar or not, whichever we want. It is hard. Just for it is. It, it is hard, isn't it? And I think you've raised a really valid point there that, you know, it's impossible to avoid all sugar. And actually, we say to people with diabetes that, you know, you don't need to avoid all sugar, but it's about trying to eat a healthy balanced diet isn't it but yes you're right there's so much hidden sugar in a lot of the food that uh, that we eat it, it makes it more difficult when you have diabetes and, and you are trying to uh, control the the amount of, of sugar you have yes yes I mean I, I've heard people say oh I've been diagnosed with diabetes and oh I can't give up this I can't give up, give up that and they've carried on eating chocolates and, and sweet stuff. Why? Why do it? it? It's silly. It really is silly. We can live without sugar. We have to have a certain amount. And yes, I do crave for sugar at times. And I do indulge in a chocolate now and again. But you have to live on. Well, I think that's true for all of us, isn't it? And I think we, we've sort of said before, haven't we? And anything in, in moderation and it, it's, it's being sensible and, you know, the, the foods that perhaps aren't so good for us, limiting and, and saving for a, a special occasion. I just wanted to touch on, on something you, you said earlier about, uh, you know, advice you would give to people and saying, get it seen to straight away because you you have always done that if ever you've developed a new problem haven't you you've got you've contacted your podiatrist or your gp or the, the foot clinic straight away and alerted people to the fact that there's a problem so that you've been able to get treatment and all too often you know if if there is a delay it it, it means things can get worse and deteriorate and that that's when we end up in 
uh, you know, with with problems. So uh, I think what you've always, uh, you know, been that that message is 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 really important, isn't it? Yeah, I I can nearly always tell when I've got an infection in in my feet. Um, my blood sugars usually um, increase uh, to the extent. Well, it it's not really bad, but it's high to me. When it goes up to 10, 11, 12, I worry and I need to know what I can do and please do something quick for me. That's quite a good indicator for you, isn't it? And and I think it goes back to what we were talking about, not feeling if there's a problem, because you, you've mentioned there that you if you've got an infection in your feet, it doesn't always hurt you, does it? You may no. have no, no feeling to you know tell you, oh, there's a problem going on there. But things like your your blood sugars, you know, sort of rising makes you think, oh, what's what's causing that? Could it be an infection? And that's you know why it's so important to look at your feet regularly, isn't it? Every day to to check there's nothing going on. Absolutely, yes. I mean, people put cream on their face to make them look good. They cream their hands, their arms, their legs. What about the feet? You need to tend to them as well. And if if you've got any doubts whatsoever, please. Seek medical advice. It's very, very hard. Very. It, it's very. Mm, I don't know. It, it is hard, but I try to keep cheerful. What's the point in being sad? Oh, uh, it, but like you say, you know, sometimes it is difficult when you're having to go to lots of appointments and see you know, all the different healthcare professionals um, and having to have dressings uh, changed. But uh, it, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? it? It affects, you know, the way you live your life and your, your quality of life. But uh, I, I think you, you ticked on, you know, you mentioned there about sort of, you know, not forgetting about the feet. You know, like you say, we, we perhaps, you know, use the face creams and it's quite evident you've been using your face cream but yeah, I mean, it's important we don't just stick our feet in shoes and put them away and, and forget about them. And uh, uh, if in doubt, shout is is a really good motto. You know, if there's something that wasn't there yesterday, something that you're not sure about, it's really important to get somebody to check it out to make sure it's not the start of something that could develop into something more serious if it's if it's just left. Exactly. Um, yes. <sighs> The lack of sensation in your feet, um, it, it's a weird, weird feel, it, feeling because your brain is telling you that you've got feet, you can still do this, you can still do that, but the actual feeling is not there and it's a weird feeling. I can have treatment done, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, don't, I just don't feel it. When... Mm just is debriding um the the ulcers i don't feel it they they could stab me and i wouldn't know so your early warning system has, has gone hasn't it that you know normally if if we a shoes too tight or we get a stone in the shoe or you knock knock your foot cut your foot but for, for many of us if we haven't got diabetes or we've got you know good feeling in our feet We'd, it would be painful. It would tell us there's a problem, but you, you you haven't got that early warning system, and that's why it's it's so important to check the feet, isn't it? So. Exactly. And another thing, I never ever ever walk around in bare feet. Never ever. As Good soon advice. as I'm hmm. out of bed, I'm in my boots, and um, I just wouldn't walk around because you don't know what's on the floor. You don't know what's on the carpet. You could have dropped a staple even. You wouldn't know that you'd walked on it. That Absolutely. That's a classic warning sign. So Daphne, you, you, you mentioned amputation as well, because you, you have had some, some, some of your toes removed. And 
I think sometimes people are perhaps, you know, they've heard about people who perhaps had toes or, or even legs, as you mentioned earlier, amputated. And, and that can sometimes scare them and perhaps stop them from seeking seeking help. But I think as, as you know, we've, we've seen here, it, it, the earlier you, you do seek help, the less likely you are to, to sort of run into more serious problems. Absolutely. I mean, I could have had diabetes for many years before I was actually diagnosed. And looking back, yes, I could have had it before, but not noticed it. I've always had delicate skin on my feet, a new pair of shoes. I'd walk for about five minutes and I'd blistered. I never thought that that was a classic sign. But looking back, yes, it was. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, don't ignore your feet. They are precious. Oh, Daphne, thank you so much for, for sharing your story with us today. I think you you are an inspiration how uh, how positive and, and cheerful you always are whenever you, uh, you, you come into clinic and, and see the team and, and chat to... Uh, to other patients so really appreciate um you taking the time to, to share that with us today is there any final message any final thing you'd like to say well people tell me that i'm lucky that i get to go out albeit by an ambulance <laughs> or a car to go to a hospital so i'm classed as one of the lucky ones <laughs> I could think of better social lives, but <laughs> exactly. But I, I can't fault the wonderful team. They make me so welcome now. I'm part of the family. Well, thank you again, Daphne. It's been lovely chatting to you, and um, I'm, I'm sure other people will will really appreciate the, the, the time you've given us today. So, so thank you for that. You're very welcome. I've I've enjoyed it. Um, if I can help anybody, I would. Well, thank you for, for joining us, uh, everybody, today. And um, Daphne's quite a lady, isn't she? Um, sadly, she can't uh, be with us um, as we speak at the moment because she's had another appointment today. Um, but um, she was really keen to, to share her story um, with you and, and just uh, try and get uh, some element um, of... Uh, the impact her, her foot problems has had on her her lives. Um, if anybody does have any questions, I'm more than happy to uh, to try answering them. Um, if you want to uh, pop your questions into the uh, into the chat, um, I'd be more than happy to uh, to answer those for you. One of the messages in, in the chat at the moment is, is from Eleanor, who has put a link in there um, to uh, Diabetes UK. Um, and uh, she's mentioned the touch the toes test as part of a daily foot self-care um, regimen. Uh, so the link is there in the, the chat. Um, via Diabetes UK um, and that's uh, the, the touch the toes test is, is literally just using a, a finger to, to touch the toes to, to see whether you've lost any feeling in your feet. As Daphne mentioned earlier, um, that can certainly contribute to uh, problems uh, getting, uh, getting worse. So um, we've got a, a question here. Um, is an annual diabetic foot check for younger people adequate or should these checks be more frequently? And that's a really good question, Sharon. So thank you for, for asking that. Um, now, if you have diabetes, the recommendations are that you have a, a foot check at least once a year. And when you have your foot check, and this will invariably be with your practice nurse at your GP surgery, they will check the blood flow to your feet. They will check the feeling in your feet and whether you've got any loss of feeling or loss of sensation. We call that neuropathy. And they will also have a look at your feet, see if you've got any, any deformities or uh, 
like sort of um, bent toes or, or anything like that. And they will be able to tell you your risk, your foot risk, uh, whether you are at low risk of developing foot problems or whether you are at moderate risk or high risk of developing foot problems. Um, now, we the recommendations are that, <clears throat> that somebody that is at low risk, in other words, they have no loss of feeling, the blood flow to their feet is good and they've got no deformities, then an annual foot check should be adequate. But we always recommend people to, to, to keep an eye on the feet and if, if they notice anything or that they're unsure of to, to get a healthcare professional to just check that over for them. For somebody who's classified as moderate risk, so that might be somebody that um, has got some loss of feeling, for example, then the recommendation is that they have their foot check every three to six months. But certainly many younger people um, do their own foot checks and using the, the touch the toes test, as, uh, as was mentioned a, a few minutes ago, can be a way of ass assessing the sensation and, and looking, looking at the feet. And for somebody who's at high risk of developing foot problems, and that may be somebody that's got reduced blood flow to the feet and some, some nerve damage or, or a deformity, then the recommendations are that they should have their feet checked every one to two months. And certainly if, if um, you are under the, the regular follow up of, of the podiatry service, then your, your feet will be reassessed at, at each visit. So I hope that uh, that answers that question. Generally speaking, I'm pleased to say that most younger people are, are low risk of developing foot problems. So in that case, an annual diabetic foot check would be quite adequate.